Are you preparing your IB exam or A-level exam in physics? Well, this video is for you. Today we will train in atomic physics. More specifically, we will carry out an exercise concerning atomic energy levels. Hello, welcome to Physics Made Easy. This video is for IB students and A-level students studying physics for their exams. We will be training on atomic physics. So I will present on the screen in a few seconds an exercise. Pause the video when I do that and try to solve it. Then I come back and I will review the questions with you. This exercise got three sections actually. So we will do page by page uh, in this manner. Are you ready? Oh yeah, just I forgot to say. In the description I will put a link to a document that compiles all the full exercise. Like this you can train yourself first if you wish and then watch the video later. Okay, are you ready? Yes? Let's go and good luck. So, how did it go? The first question is a blah blah question. It means that the examiner wishes to assess your knowledge on the topic, your general knowledge on the topic. So when you have these kind of questions, you need to study them carefully before you rush into them, right? Especially if they count for many marks. You need to know what he wants. So the question was, Explain how atomic emission spectra are evident that atomic energy levels are discrete. Well, the examiner wishes you to connect the energy levels of an atom with the emission spectra of this atom. And by this connection, deduce that the levels are discrete. So, how do you do that? Well, first you explain that when an atom releases energy, it does it under the form of a photon of energy E equals HF equals HC over the wavelength. Then you say that the photon is actually light and described also by its wavelength, and you connect it to the line in the emission spectra. Now you see that the lines in the emission spectra, there's only certain specific wavelengths which are allowed, which exist. Therefore, the photons can only have certain specific energies. Therefore, the transition, the emission transition of the atom can only be of certain energies. The atom is only allowed to release fixed amount of energies. That leads to the fact that the levels need to be discrete. The atom can only have certain levels of energy. Now, this is quite difficult to synthesize in just a few words, right? You're not going to write an essay. This question is on three marks, so you need to be synthetic. So to help you, I prepared these sentences that are going to appear on the screen now. When an excited atom releases energy, it emits a photon of energy corresponding to the difference of energy between two atomic energy levels. The energy of a photon is determined by its wavelength. An atomic spectra is composed of discrete lines of specific wavelength, thus corresponding respectively to photons emitted with a specific energy. Consequently, only specific energies are allowed for the transition between atomic energy levels. This implies that the levels of energy of an atom are discrete. The second question requires from you to calculate the energy of the levels. So it gives you actually the first one, minus 13.6 electron volt. To do that, we use the equation that results from the atomic model from Bohr of the hydrogen atom. This equation is E 
n electron volts is equal to minus 13.6 divided by n square, where n is the number of the level, 1, 2, 3. It's also called a principal quantum number. So we got the first one, and you see that for n equals 1, minus 13.6 divided by 1 squared is minus 13.6 electron volts. We can find the second one, minus 13.6 divided by 2 squared, so 4. And that gives you minus 3.40 3 electron volts that you can put on the graph. We can calculate the third one. E3 equals minus 13.6 divided by 3 squared, so 9, giving you minus 1.51 electron volts, etc. For 4, so you would put 16 here, you'd find minus 0 0.85, this minus 0 0.544, and this one minus 0 0.378, all in electron volts. So here you go. You got now all the energies of the six first levels. Now, page two of the exercise. When it appears, pause the video and try to work it out by yourself. Question C. The emission diagram of hydrogen that is presented in this exercise only exhibit lines from the Balmer series. To what family of transition does the Balmer series correspond to? So basically what they're asking you is for the definition of the Balmer series. The Balmer series is the name given to a family of spectral emission lines from the hydrogen atom, where the atom transits from a high level to level 2. So I can draw the Balmer series for our diagram. That would be transition from 6 to 2, from 5 to 2, from 4 to 2, and then from 3 to 2. Why is this series special? It's because they correspond to energy transition, <coughs> therefore to wavelengths which are in the visible light that we can see. So, what is asked for me in the next question? Calculate the wavelengths corresponding to the lines of the hydrogen spectra. On the diagram below, so this one, label the lines with your results. So, you have four lines on the spectra, and it is also told you in the exercise that these lines correspond to the Balmer series, i.e. to these transitions. Well, we have the energy levels, so we can calculate the energy of the photons which are emitted, therefore their wavelength, and therefore attribute them to each of these lines. Let's try for this transition from 3 to 2. The energy of the photon emitted will be equal to the energy of level 3 minus the energy of level 2. Right? So it will also be equal to hf or hc on lambda. This wavelength will correspond to the transition from level 3 to 2. So I'll just note it down, lambda 3 to 2. If I equate these two and I rearrange the equation, so let's equate them. And now rearrange the equation. I can calculate the wavelengths corresponding to this transition. Let's do that. Let's plug in the numbers. So I've got lambda 3, 2 equals 6.63 by 10 to the minus 34. This is a Planck constant. Then 3 by 10 to the 8, which is the speed of light. Then the difference of energies, so from 3 to 2. So that would be from minus 1.51 plus 3.40. But be careful, these are electron volts. Now, we need to stand in uh, SI units, right? So we have to convert this in joules. As a reminder, one electron volts 
is equal to 1.6 by 10 to the minus 19 joules. Therefore, I just multiply by 1.6 by 10 to the minus 19. The answer I find, let me look at my notes, for this transition is 658 nanometers, or 6.58 by 10 to the minus 7 meters. So this transition corresponds to a wavelength of 658 nanometers. Well, the largest wavelength I have on my spectra is the red one. Therefore, I would put 658 nanometers above it. If I want to calculate, for example, level 4 to 2, I repeat the operation. I just change my indexes. This number is the same. Oh, sorry, this one. <laughs> this one. I would just need to change the uh, energies here. So it would not be from 151 to 340, but from 0 to 85. So if you have a, so it's not 658 anymore, uh, what I found was 488 nanometers. So that would be this one. Therefore, this one. Now you see you have to do this calculation multiple times. It's a good idea to actually calculate for once this value, but not this one, this value, Calculate it once. So I would have, uh, yeah, lambda from level n to level 2 equals 1.243 by 10 to the minus 16 divided by the energy n minus or plus 340. Like this, I could just plug in the energy level corresponding to the transition from n to 2. That's, uh, it's like making a little coding program, you know? But if you have many calculations to do, it will reduce the number of calculations you need to do, therefore the risk of errors. The next lines are 435 nanometers and 411. So I write them better. I'm sorry for my writing. Sometimes uh, I write not very well. Yeah, and you see this is a four. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to put the third page now on, pause the video, and try to figure out the answers to the questions by yourself. Question D. What can one say about a hydrogen atom that has an energy corresponding to level n equals 1? Therefore, if the hydrogen atom is at its lowest level. If it's at its lowest level, it means it has its lowest energy. It is the most stable configuration it can have. We say that the atom is in its ground state. Why ground? Well, when you have an object on the ground, it cannot fall further, right? When you have an object on the ground, it has its minimum gravitational potential energy. Well, this is an analogy, if you wish, with simple mechanics. Right, question E. Assume that we excite an atom of hydrogen up to its level n equals 5. How many emission lines would we expect to find in its spectra? Well, now the atom is at level n equals 5, so it is going to relax, it is going to emit photons and release energy. So, it goes from, for example, n equals 5 to n equals 1, or n equals 5 to n equals 2, or n equals 5 to n equals 3, or 4. But that's not all. 
Now, the atom can also be on level 4, 3, and 2, right? So it can continue losing energy from, for example, 4 to 1, 4 to 2, or 4 to 3. Same thing for level 3. The atom could be at level 3, so it could also emit photons corresponding to a difference of energy between 3 and 1, or 3 and 2. And finally, you would have a last transition from 2 to 1. So how many transitions are possible when you have the atom on level 5 to start with? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 transitions are possible. Next question. For the atom mentioned in question E, that is, this atom with a level, uh, initial level of energy n equals 5, to what transition would correspond the most energetic photon emitted? Well, it would correspond to the most energetic transition, right? So, from 5 to 1. What would be its wavelengths? Okay, so it's easy to calculate. We've done it before. You know that the energy of the photon is equal to hc over lambda, that being the wavelengths. So, lambda equals hc over the energy of the photon in joules. What is the energy of the photon? Well, it corresponds to the difference of energy between these levels. So lambda, well, let's plug in the numbers straight away. 6.63 for the Planck constant, by 10 to the minus 34, multiplied by 3 to 10 to the 8 for the speed of light. The difference of energy between the levels corresponding to the energy of the photon, 13.6 minus 0.544. And let's remember to put this in joules by multiplying it by 1.6 10 to the minus 19. Let's remove this because it's confusing. Ah. Um, and what do I find? Well, I found 95.2 nanometers. So this leads us to the last question. What region of the electromagnetic spectrum would this photon be part of? Well, an extra question for you guys. What is the visible range? Well, the visible range corresponds to lights which have wavelengths between 400 nanometers and 700 nanometers. 400 nanometers will be in the blue. It's actually the most energetic light that the eyes can see. 700 nanometers is the least energetic light that the eyes can see and corresponds to dark red. So, if you are slightly under, you know, kind of one or two orders of magnitude under 400 nanometers, well, you know it's going to be UV. If you are slightly above, say, one or two uh, orders of magnitude above 700 nanometers, well, you know, you are in infrared. So here, this is UV light. Voila, so this concludes this exercise, we've completed it. I hope it was useful to you, so don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed it. I haven't been doing many videos recently, right, because I was busy with other projects, but now I think I'm going to go back into it because the exam is approaching and I really want you guys to succeed. So please subscribe, many good things are coming up. And ah, to finish, I will wish you Good luck for your exams. Bye.